know, in, in, in the back of our mind, we associate popularity equals mediocre. Right. It's, pulp. Like pulp. It's, like pulp. Right. It's pulp. It's neither really good. It's not really bad. You, you don't you don't get that kind of popular success by it being really embarrassingly bad. Mm -hmm. No, it's just middle of the road. But in fact, there are some and most popular stuff is middle of the road. But there are some who are able to and I, I talk about it, this is an actual technique, which is to transcend the genre. Right. And it, it's something you actually do in the script, which kicks it up from what everybody else is doing in that genre. And it's and it's it's doing something that we really haven't seen before or we've seen it very rarely. And basically what they're doing is they're taking the traditional beats and they're twisting them and resequencing in some cases so that even though it's the same general structure, it's, for example, a detective story. It's still a detective story. But the way they did the detective story, I've never seen before. So it's filled with surprises. And this is one, in, in my opinion, one of the keys, if not the most important, I won't say rule because I don't like that word, but, but it's pretty damn close to a rule, which is that your best chance of success as a screenwriter or in any medium of storytelling is specializing in one genre, become the best at that form, mix it with two or three other forms, and transcend it. Do it, do the beats in a unique way that we've never seen. And if you do that, you get the combination, rare combination of it's really popular and it's highly respected critically. It's like, pulp, that, like pulp Fiction. Like Pulp Fiction. Like Fall Fiction, or recently, for example, I would just mentioned the detective form, Knives Out. Yeah, the Who Done It? Like, when was the last time we saw Who Done It? Like Clue? Right. Yeah, it doesn't it, exactly. It does not exist in the movies anymore. It does not. the The last one we had was certainly. Oh no, the the Orient Express, the Orient Express film yes. came out a little bit ago as That's well. A, but in terms of like an original, an original, uh, you're going back to L.A. Confidential. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I like to, again, is it transcendent? But in but basically, the detective form does not exist in the movies. It's all in television, all in television. And yet, he was able to do it in such a unique way that we want to, you know, leave home, leave all the the detective possibilities we have on the TV, and actually go to the theater and watch it. I mean, that was really quite original and and ingenious. Some of the things that he was doing, but that's what you want to do. Whatever your form is. You need to specialize so you can master the beats. You can't twist the beats until you've mastered them in the first place. And it, by the way, it brings up another pet peeve of mine. One of the things that drives me absolutely nuts is when I hear, you know, on these on these you know, Facebook posts or these screenwriting places, they say, you know, you you have to to uh, learn the rules to break the rules. Um. And, you know, the implication is that the ideal is to not have follow any, rules, right? Not, have, not follow any rules because, because that stunts creativity, right? Well, on, on the surface, that makes total sense. It's complete nonsense because what those rules are, what I always say is, well, if it's a good rule, you probably want to follow it. If it's a bad rule, no, you don't. But for example, if I'm if I'm walking on the top of a of a mountain and there's a rule that if you step off of the mountain, you're going to fall to your death. You don't want to break that rule. Right. So Same thing goes with story. It was story. You know, there are certain things that that you want to do. You want an active main character driving the story. Right. You want to have a single main character who can focus the conflict and so on. You want other opponents who can create a, a density of attack and so on and so forth. There are certain rules that are really useful, and this is the way genre works as well. Those beats are rules. Those are, those are beats that must be there, or it's not the form. If you don't have a first kiss in your love story, you're dead. But is it, once, 
got that, then you have to do it in a unique way. But isn't isn't it true though? Like I've seen this happen with with directors, with um, with screenwriters. They're so invested in showing that they do not adhere to these rules that they'll go out on a limb to do something that's so outside the box of rules and it doesn't work. So it's the equivalent of me going up or like a happy Madison. If you remember that one with Adam Sandler, where he was the golfer, he played golf with a hockey stick um, because (laughs) that's the way he knew how to do it. And it worked for him. But generally speaking, if I show up to a golf, a golf course and I'm going to drive with a hockey stick because it's not the rule. Right. Uh, I'm not going to make it. There's certain yeah. things in a, in a golf swing in a golf yeah. club. There's certain basics that you need to do. Now, once you're Tiger Woods and you've swung that, if you want to bring out a hockey stick, I'm I'm going to watch Tiger Woods with a hockey stick and oh, see how it works out. <laughs> but, but he's not going to do it. If he's he trying will. to win that tournament, right. see, that's the thing is right. These rules are there because they work. And the, the point is not to be slave to the rule. And that's why I always say, learn the beats of the genre, but don't break those beats. Don't, don't fail to, don't say, oh, I'm beyond these beats and I don't have to have them at all. No, do the beats in a way we haven't seen before. Like Cameron. Like Cameron, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, but, but, but this thing about genres and how you deal with genres it, that's the game. That's the ball game now in every medium in po- in worldwide storytelling. I just never, I've just never again, once again, John, you've made me think about story in a completely unique way. Because I, I, on a on a sub, on a visceral level, I understood what you meant, yeah. but I never consciously thought about combining genre before. But like, you're like, yeah, he's right. It's an action mixed with myth, mixed with a love story, and he's done it all his career. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's been extremely successful, and with even uh, what is the secret agent, true lies, you know, story, which again on paper, it sounds like eh, eh, it doesn't sound like oh, okay, eh, it does. But when you start looking at a movie like True Lies or The Abyss, even, I mean, it's it's a love story. At the end of the day, The Abyss is a love story that happens to have sci-fi and aliens and some cool action in it. And then there's, the, and then he also don't forget he always throws the technical, right. you know, prowess over it, which a lot of screenwriters don't have that capability because they don't have a James Cameron in there. So he's a very unique style filmmaker as a whole package. It's just nobody, not Ridley Scott, not Nolan, not Fincher, not Kubrick. There's just nobody that's had his combination of stuff and how he does but, it. But also keep in mind, keep in mind that it's so often forgotten. And I'm a, I'm a huge believer in screenwriter as auteur. Mm-hmm. I, I do not believe, I think the director auteur theory is one of the stupidest things that anybody ever came up with. And every time I teach my class in Paris, I make it a point to tell them that <laughs> because that's where it came from. Of course. You know, and it's spread here. But but you know, some of the directors you mentioned write their material, mm-hmm. but some of them don't. Yeah. And the thing about Cameron, which is why he's been able to get this consistency of not only quality, but consistency of popularity, is that he's always a co writer on it. Mm-hmm. And 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 or or the only writer. And what that allows him to do is he's come, he's creating it from the structural position. When a director comes onto it, the stru- yeah, you can change certain things, but the structure is there. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be messing with that unless you want massive cost overruns. So that's why I always look, I always look at the screenplay, even though it's not fashionable. You know, everybody else likes to throw around their directors, but to me, it, it's the unknown screenwriter or writer director that is really where you need to look at for a what are the techniques from why this thing is working Mm -hmm. and then and then be why are why is this person so good at where what what is their skill level and cameron is just consistently done it over over years and years and years this entire career over decades yeah over decades of, of work 